Welcome, everyone. I'm Stephanie Maddox on the Platform Tooling team. It's so nice to see you all here in person. Thanks for coming out. We've only got 20 minutes for this session, so let's get down to it. This session is all about tools that can help you be more productive when you build on the platform. Before we fully dive in, just a reminder that Salesforce is a publicly traded company, and you should always make any purchasing decisions based on what is publicly available. Our teams build the tools that your teams use every day to build on the platform, like the CLI and VS Code extensions. Those tools are super powerful to let you build on the platform, and we want to make sure that they are accessible to everyone on the team who needs them. That's why we're bringing you CodeBuilder. CodeBuilder is a web-based development environment optimized for Salesforce. It provides a full-featured IDE right in your browser that you can launch by just clicking a button from your org. It includes the productivity features you would expect from a modern IDE, like search, code completion, refactoring, and support for all Salesforce languages and frameworks. That's right, there's no install or configuration needed on your device. All right, let's dive in and take a look. We're going to do a beta this summer, and I'm stoked to give you a sneak peek today. So before we dive into Code Builder, let's talk a little bit about the app we're going to use for our demos today. So we're going to be using e-bikes. E-bikes is a fictitial, fictional electric bicycle manufacturer. It's a lightning app that's used to manage all the products and reseller orders. I've already installed this app in my developer edition org that you can see here, an example of the product explorer page with all the tiles and our fancy little bikes here. Cool, so that's the app we're going to use. You can check it out, it's out there as well. Now let's talk about Code Builder. The Code Builder beta will also be distributed as an app on App Exchange. You'll be able to add that to an org, and once you do that, you can set up the permissions to decide who can check out Code Builder during our beta. I've already installed that app as well in my developer edition org. And the first time I use Code Builder, I will come over here to the dashboard that I get as a part of that app. Now here you'll tell us what org you want to work with and where your files are. Now this is simply a starting point. Once you're in Code Builder, you can connect to additional orgs or work with different files, but this lets you dive right in and get started. So for example, for this demo, I requested and created a new developer edition org. I installed these two apps I mentioned, and I pointed to a source control repo to load in my code. I did all of that in about eight minutes, and I do admit I was a little distracted by Slack in the meantime, so it's probably a bit less. Now, if you don't use source control, not to worry. You can also start with an empty project and then grab metadata from your org. No sweat. All right. Once I do that one-time setup, anytime I want to come back to Code Builder, I can just click on Launch, or I can go to the URL that I've already bookmarked and not even have to go to the org at all. So here I am in Code Builder. Code Builder provides some resources to get you started that you see here on screen. And now some of you who might be using our VS Code extensions might be thinking this looks a little familiar, right? And you're right, it is. It's the same extensions that we offer you in VS Code on the desktop right here in the browser. All right, so let's check it out and see some of the things we can do. First of all, let's make sure I'm in the right org. I'm doing a few different sessions here at TDX, and I do have a deploy in this demo, so it's always good to work confidently. So let's check it out. I can do that by simply coming down here and clicking on my org nickname or alias that I gave it when I connected it and bring up the org picker here. So here I, could, I can see the couple of orgs I've already connected to Code Builder. Then I could also connect a new org using creds or a session ID or create a new scratch org. It looks like I am in the, wrong, in the right org, so that's awesome. Now another tool at your disposal here in Code Builder is the CLI. That's right, the SFDX and our new unified CLI, SF, are right here in the browser with me. So I can see all those commands. I have the same access that I have on desktop. So if you're used to looking at your org info by maybe doing like a force org list, you could do that as well and see those connected orgs right here. All right, awesome. Feel good, I'm confident I'm in the right org. Let's see what else we've got here in Code Builder. I also have the org browser. The org browser lets you view your metadata in your org and pull it down so that you can work with it. So for example, if I want to grab this product controller class, with just a click, I can grab that 
and the file is open and ready for me to work right in the browser. Now behind the scenes when I did that click, it's doing a retrieve and then copying that file into my code builder environment so that I can do some work. So let's check out this file in a little more detail. Um, let's walk through an example of just making a quick change here. Uh, you remember that product explorer tab panel that I have, right? Let's say that we want to change this so that we're not showing any bikes that are out of stock. So if we don't have it, don't want to see it here. That sounds like it's probably going to be a query change to this page. And I have a strong suspicion that the query we need is in that controller I just downloaded. So let's check it out in a little more detail. If I look at this git products method, I can see that I'm building up a SQL query where clause based on the filters that are passed in. So based on those filters, I then walk through some conditionals to build up that where clause. And when I see the status field down below here, pretty sure that's the field I need. I don't actually remember the value, though, that I need for that field of what, what tells us that it's out of stock. So let's open up another tool that I have at my disposal here in Code Builder. This is SQL Builder. SQL Builder lets you build and run SQL queries right here in the IDE. So right in the browser, I can create a SQL query. Let's check out our products. And we'll just add some simple fields here, grab that status field that I think is the one I want. And then I can run that and see the results right here. And ah, it's sold. That's the value I'm after. OK, so I can see here sold, like this Dynamo X3. I would expect that one to drop off the page. OK, while I'm here, let's go ahead and work out the SQL logic. I don't know about you, but I kind of like to do this separately from my code so that I'm not um, then trying to test it all at once. If you don't remember the operators, no worries, we've got your back. And now I'm doing this with clicks. I could also do this with code. We have rich code completion as well for SQL Builder. So you could pop over to the editor, see code completion, and help you there. All right, awesome. I see that I have fewer bikes, and I see that that Dynamo X3 is gone. So I feel pretty confident I've got the right thing here. I'm going to go ahead and copy that logic that I just worked out, make some space, and head on back to my product controller class. All right, since I always want to suppress those sold or out of stock bikes, let's just go ahead and add a clause here that we'll add all the time. And we will paste in that string that we just worked out. Now, I just need to adjust my quotes here and escape these single quotes that I've got in the mix here. All right. Should be just about what I want. All right, I think that's got it. All right, let's go ahead and deploy it. So now I'm making this change I just made in Code Builder. I'm now pushing that into my org and deploying it there. So let's check out the change. So coming back to our Product Explorer tab here, we'll remember that Dynamo X3 that was sold. And we'll go ahead and refresh it to pick up the change that I just deployed into this org. All right, I see that Dynamo X3 is gone. And I only have 11 bikes here instead of 16 which matches my SQL query I did. So awesome. I made the change I wanted, and I did all of that right there in Code Builder and my org. So now coming back to Code Builder, this is an awesome place to work. It's a great place to do your work. You have all the power you need here. However, it's not long-term storage. So you still want to put this change somewhere. That somewhere is going to depend on your team's process. So maybe you just need to deploy this to another org and promote it to the next phase in your team's process. I could easily do that by coming back to the org picker here, selecting a different org and connecting to it, or connecting to a new one, and then repeating that deploy that I just did. If your team has perhaps some plugins that you have added to the CLI, I could also come back to the terminal in my CLI, and I could execute any of those commands I need to kick off my DevOps process. And then if your team is using source control, I also have that right here in Code Builder. So I can come over here to the Source tab, see the changes I've made, and I could stage or commit these right from here. So if your teams are maybe starting to work with DevOps Center, for example, you might be committing to that same repo that maps to your process in DevOps Center. Now, no matter what your process is, everyone on the team has access to the modern tools they need with the CLI and source control right here in the browser. 
Now, everything I just showed you is available in our extensions in VS Code today. So you could go do it right now on the desktop. Soon it'll be here in the browser in Code Builder as well. And depending on what tools you use, today this might look a lot different than what you're used to using. And we, we want to help you map the power of this interface to your Salesforce specifics. So we've added things in Code Builder like this welcome page that gives you a little bit of links directly to some quick tasks that you might be inter interested in doing. And then also, if you're in VS Code, if you're already used to using that, we also have a quick link here to see what's different. In general, it's the same tooling and same experience whether you're in the browser or on desktop. However, there are a couple nuances to working in the cloud, and we know that our existing users of VS Code want to know what's different, so we've got that right here for you as well. We've also added an interactive tour that shows you some of the things I just demoed. So if you're brand new to this interface, you can dive in, interact with it. It's going to walk you through those different steps and help you get acclimated so that you can understand how you can take this power and get your work done faster, because that's our goal with our tooling. All right. Now, everything I showed you here would not be possible without the open source community. Code Builder is built on a lot of great technologies, and there's a couple in particular I want to call out and give thanks to. Salesforce continues to build our tools in the open, so all of our tools are open source. You can check them out. You can dive into our repos. So if you need to extend it, you can do that. And at Salesforce, we're committed to continuing to giving back to the, to the open source community and embracing open standards so that we can bring you the very best tools possible. And collectively, we can fuel more innovation and productivity than we could on our own. All right, as I mentioned, we're going to have a beta this summer. That's going to be an open beta. This means that you do not have to be nominated. You can just go check it out. So we're going to have a package out there on App Exchange. You'll be able to grab it, add that to an org, and check out Code Builder. We can't wait for you to check it out and hope you'll give us some feedback. Um, you can look for that beta announcement in our developer blog, so stay tuned to that. And this is just the start. So this is the first place, but we're going to have more tooling with this same interface. So once you learn your way around Code Builder, you'll be able to take those skills and use it across the platform. MuleSoft is the next place where we'll be seeing this tooling. And they have a session tomorrow um, at 1230. So if you want to see what MuleSoft looks like in the same Code Builder interface, I would definitely recommend checking that out. Um, even if you don't use Mule today, um, super cool things they're doing there. Some other sessions I definitely recommend you check out while you're here um, in just a few minutes over in the Redwood Theater. We'll be talking about what's new with DevOps for Architects. Um, that's going to be a rundown of what's new and what's coming across packaging, environments, DevOps, and tooling. And then make sure you stick around tomorrow to see what's new in our extensions for VS Code. As I mentioned, you can see all of that in VS Code today, and soon you'll see it in Code Builder as well. So no matter which place you are, you have the same tooling and the same skills that you can apply. All right, thank you so much for coming out and checking out Code Builder. I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your Trailblazer DX. I've got a few more minutes, so if you have questions, bring them to me. <laughs> sure. So the question was, I didn't show projects, and he's wondering if there is. There is, yes. So there is an SFDX project within Code Builder. Um, I could. It does, yeah. So he's asking if it lives in the cloud. So I do have this project structure. For those who aren't familiar with what a project is, it's essentially a container for your metadata that organizes, it, and it's also the trigger to activate our tooling. So. If you launch into Code Builder and say, hey, I don't have a repo today. I just, need, I just want to get started. We'll create that for you. So you'll drop into an empty project, and then you could use the org browser or other ways and grab metadata from an org and get started that way. And we'll put it right in your project for you. Yeah. Sure, yeah, so the question was, other than the Salesforce extensions, are there other extensions that you can add here? So some things like key bindings are already there, themes are already there. For our beta, we are going to restrict that to just the Salesforce extensions, and we want your feedback on what else you want. 
Um, so there is an open source um, community, Open V6, where you, where you can also pull extensions from. And we would love to know your feedback on that, if that is helpful or scary. Um, you know, we want to give you all the tools you need. So definitely give us that feedback during beta and let us know what other tools you would really want there or if you would want to be able to load your own. Sure. Yeah, great question. So this one was, what is the cost, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, so we yet to be determined. So we will determine that once we get to GA. But our intention is to provide some level of access to Code Builder for everyone. Now, we are looking at maybe a freemium model. Maybe there would be some additional features that we would have there. Um, but we're looking at those costs and things, and we'll have that sorted by GA. But for beta, um, TBD on that. Yeah. Can you say that again? Gotcha. OK, so the question was, how do things sync between projects? So if you're bouncing between a couple different SFDX projects and you have different settings, are those different settings like in your, within the project, like different? Um, Ah, uh, gotcha. OK, VS Code specific settings. So those would be based on your user. So like if I were, went in here and changed the theme, for example. So if I switch over here like to um, dark, the next time I come into Code Builder, even if I switch to a different project, those are still going to be there. So kind of just like VS Code, those settings that you have that are regarding your interface are going to apply across those projects. Yeah. All right, this question is, when are we deprecating the dev console? There is no plan at this time to deprecate the dev console. We do think once we roll out Code Builder, it's going to have all the power you need, and you're not really going to want to use dev console anymore. It will include things like support for functions and lightning web components, things that you can't access at all in dev console. But we do not have any plans as of yet of, of when we would terminate that. And we would definitely communicate that well ahead of time, but you know we're really focused right now on getting Code Builder in all of your hands and you checking it out. And we're pretty confident that at the end of the day, you're you're going to love it and it's going to have all you need. All right, I have time for maybe one more question. If anyone has one. All right, awesome. Well, thank you all so much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your Trailblazer DX.